Hi, this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com, and today we're going to talk about the perfect amount of traffic you should have per test variation. If you've ever wondered how much traffic you should allocate per test variation, then this video is for you. At the end of this video, I also want to give you one really great practical tip that I started using recently to help people feel comfortable about using more traffic in your tests. Today I'm going to talk to you about the four strategic reasons why you should have the perfect amount of traffic in each of your test variations. So what is the answer to how much traffic you should include in your test variations? How much traffic should you, should you allocate per variation? The answer is all of it, as much as possible. If you've ever been in congested traffic or a traffic jam where you're trying to get somewhere but you're just stuck, you're going at a snow's place, then this feeling of being stuck is applicable for this testing video. When you're doing your A-B testing, you might be tempted to use the built-in features of all the testing tools that allow you to change the percent allocation of each variation and target different amounts of traffic per variation. Whenever you're tempted to lower the traffic amount, remember the traffic jam. Remember the feeling of being stuck in traffic and not going anywhere. Your testing program suffers the same way as being stuck in a traffic jam when you reduce the traffic allocation per variation. I realize in lots of organizations there's a temptation to say we want to target this to a small percentage so it's less risky or so that we don't impact the business too much. Again, remember the traffic jam. The slower you go, the fewer results you get, the longer it takes results. I want to cover the, with you four strategies and four reasons why strategically increasing the amount of traffic you, as much, to as much as possible will allow you to get better data faster. Reason and strategy number one is segmentation. The more data you have, the more you can do segmentation. Suppose with me, for example, you run a test and 100 visitors get in the test. You now only have 100 visitors to segment. And so if you want to look at mobile devices or repeat visitors or return customers or you know whether some demographic information, if you have people who are logged in or logged out, you can't really slice and dice your data on 100 visitors. But suppose you had 10,000 or a million visitors. If you wanted to say, show me all the mobile device people versus the desktop people, you now have such a large sample size that you can look at your segments and still have statistical relevant data on those smaller subpopulations of segmentation. If, however, you limit your traffic size and only allow a hundred or a couple hundred or whatever a small amount of traffic is for your, your business, then you reduce the ability to do good segmentation. And when you reduce the ability to do good segmentation, you hurt your future opportunity of doing personalization, of learning what works for different types of customers and visitors. Your segmentation is one of the most important parts of good testing. And if you reduce the population, you reduce your ability to do good segmentation. So strategy number one, and reason number one to keep your traffic as high as possible and include as many as possible people as possible is to be able to do good segmentation with each test. Reason number two for having as many people as possible is it increases your confidence and gets you that confidence level sooner. Everyone wants to be able to trust the data they're looking at. And if you have fewer people entering the test, it just takes longer for your confidence levels to get high enough to trust the data. It doesn't give you a safer result. It just means you have to wait longer to get the result you need. So if you want to make sure that the thing that is working is actually working for your visitors, you want to see a higher confidence with that data. So you want to allow as many people as possible into that test. The third reason to keep as much traffic as possible in each of your variations is because you want to see a representative sample size. When you're testing, you're testing over just a small window of time. You're not running your test for for a year or two years. And so you want to infer that the things that are working during this limited time period actually work in perpetuity. And so you want to have as much as a representative sample of your population as possible because not everyone comes to your website all at the same time. And, and the people that are coming, you're learning from them and inferring based on their behavior, what wor is working or not working. And so if you reduce the population in the test, you're limiting the fact that you're going to get an actual representative sample. So the third thing, the third reason to keep more traffic in your variations is because you really want it to represent your entire population. And again, not your entire population isn't always coming to the site. The fourth reason to always have as much traffic as possible in each of your variations is because you get faster results. We kind of already talked about this, but when you have more traffic in your tests, you get results faster. If you limit your population to say, let's say 10%, then for that 10% to add up to what it would be if it was 100%, you have to let it run almost 10 times as long. Now, I'm not saying you should just get results in a day or two and turn off because you still want to see a good trend in your data. But if you allow more people into your tests, 
then you're more confident in those results and you can get those results faster. And most importantly, you have to remember that your most valuable asset is time. And so when you can run more tests faster and get more results sooner, then you increase the amount of tests you can do, which increases the amount of learning and, and value to the business because you're maximizing the time constraint of only having so many tests you can do per year. So those are the four reasons why you should have as much traffic as possible in all of your tests. First, you get better segmentation. You can then segment and slice and dice the data to learn from your audiences and see what's working for whom. You also get higher confidence in your actual results. You have a better representative sample of your population. And finally, you can run more tests faster. If you find in your organization that you are struggling with getting buy-in to use as much traffic as possible and people want to limit the test, you may need to teach them the value of risk, the difference between positive risk and negative risk. And in general, overcoming the cultural inhibitions by good education is one thing you can try. I also want to give you one more practical tip that I started using recently. Whenever someone would ask me how much traffic is going to be in the test, well, if you only have two variations, a control and a version A, you can always come back and say 50% of the people will be in the test. The reason why is because the other 50% are going to get the control. So they're now actually being tested with something new. So this is just a simple play on words you can use to alleviate some of people's concerns about too many people seeing a test because not everyone will see every new variation. A lot of people still get the control. And again, if you have three variations, you can still say something like only 66% of people will be in those tested variations. To those who may be cautious or not want to have as much traffic of people in the test, this may help them feel a little better, even though in reality, we're still looking at the data in the control group and comparing that to the variations, but they're not getting a new experience. So this, this might be something you try as a practical tip. Um, use that little play on words and tell them that only 50% or 66% or 75% of people will be in the test. And so it reduces that from saying 100% of people every time. Now it's your turn. I want to hear from you. If you always put 100% of your traffic in all of your tests, type in 100% in the comments below. I want to see how many of us are actually doing that. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. Give me that thumbs up. And you can also visit me at testingtheory.com where you can sign up for a free consulting session and we'll talk one-on-one -on -one about your business. Testingtheory.com is where professional A-B testers come for better testing and more conversions.